basically, as you said, anyone can find it. I became aware uh, just in the last couple of days that an abortion took place in Holly Street Hospital of a baby that's completely healthy. You probably heard of this, I don't know. Have you just on the media, probably the same yeah. as. Yeah, so that basically, uh, I have reported this to the Garda Commissioner, Drew, in, uh, Drew Harris, in the other back on the uh, 11th of February 2019, that there were unlawful uh, killings taking place from the beginning of January this year mm. under the 2018 Abortion Act, in particular Section 21, which requires informed consent. In other words, the woman has to be told what pregnancy is and what abortion is okay. and the consequences that may occur. So I did make a statement, first of all, in the uh, Trotty Garda Station around the 10th or 12th of January. And I asked them to investigate what was happening in Air Lady Blur Hospital, which was not done. In fact, they refused to take a statement. So after that, I rang uh, Inspector John Panukin at the headquarters. So uh, I told, in fact, that next day I was contacted by the London Times by email, Ellen Coyne, and she wanted to know what happened that I was refused to give the statement in the draw the Garda station. I asked her by email, how did she know I was even in the Garda station, because I was only talking one to one mm -hmm. with uh, Paul, uh, I think his name is H139, was his number. Yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't give it to the, to the London Times. He was the only person I was talking to, and before him at Vanguard, but he took this statement, or what I was trying to report. So she said that uh, she didn't want to divulge her source, the reporter. Mm -hmm. So I got on to Inspector John Panukin. I said uh, confidentiality had been breached in a report of a serious crime. Uh, I'd like that to be investigated, the leak, and also the crime report itself. So I heard nothing until the 11th of February, and I remember that date because it was the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes, which <laughs> So I went into uh, the Guard headquarters, and I did um, uh, speak to Inspector John Fanukin, and he said no, he hadn't heard any more from me, so he hadn't, and as far as, far as I recall, that's what he said, just to be fair to him. So he said I'd have to put it in writing, and I did there, and then on the 11th, in the um, lobby of the headquarters, I put it in writing to inspect, uh, sorry, Commissioner Drew Harris, mm -hmm. and I gave him the substance of my allegations, and I offered to give a further statement. So I heard nothing then since that for a week or two, and I rang up again. I spoke to Inspector John Fanukin, and he, I had gotten a letter to him, confirmed that they'd gotten my letter and that go. So I said I hadn't been... Do you have a copy of that? I don't have okay. it, but okay. uh, Inspector Fanukin, or whoever it sent it, uh, I think it was actually the Garda Commission that sent it, or his secretary. Yeah. So uh, when I rang up then, uh, Inspector Fanukin said that um, Assistant Commissioner to me was allocated to investigate the, the allegation. So again, until today, I've had no further communication for them. Okay. Since the 11th of February, this is now what, March, uh, April, so March, April, May, three months, I've heard nothing. Uh, then I saw the media reports there in the last couple of days. Now, in the letter that I originally wrote to uh, Commissioner uh, Harris, I wrote that the people that were responsible were uh, under Simon Harris, the director of the maternity hospitals, and I mentioned in particular Fergal Malone in the Rotunda, and I also mentioned um, Higgins, Mary Higgins, I think her name is, in the uh, Holly Street Hospital. She would be in charge. She's the, the master of yeah, the master of okay. the um, of Holly Street, and I put down what information they were neglecting to tell, among other information to women who were considering abortion, whether it was just in general, or in the particular case of what they call fatal fetal abnormality. And I have all the research here which substantiates what they should be told and are certainly not told. Because and what, what's your evidence that they're not being told? 
Okay, well, apart from that, just in relation to this, yeah, okay, like the, yeah. yeah um, the uh, particular case that we're talking about, which occurred in the last few weeks, a couple went in to Holly Street Hospital, they still in the public domain, it's on the mm -hmm. newspaper, the independent.ie, have it And can I just, before you go, uh, do you have any other sources, or are you any closer to this, or do you have any first hand knowledge, knowledge of this, or is it just what you're getting in the media? Just what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. So, what has been stated by the family involved, uh, the, the mother and the father, they went in, uh, obviously they were pregnant, the woman was pregnant, uh, she was told that uh, the baby was handicapped, possibly tried to be 18, and they did a, a placental uh, sample, uh, which indicated that the baby was positive for that condition. Now, the placental uh, sample was contradicted by the actual baby's remains. Mm -hmm. So the baby was perfect, there was nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, the baby was killed at 15 weeks. Now, under the 2018 Act, apart from informed consent being required in relation to any risks, for example, to the woman, if, for example, the research shows, and I can just give it to you, if you have an abortion before uh, lactogenesis, uh, let's explain, lacto in milk, genesis is to, to be able to produce milk, mm -hmm. that occurs at 32 weeks, which I have mentioned here. So at 32 weeks, that gives you protection from breast cancer because it's the completion of the milk producing glands. If that doesn't occur through an interruption by abortion before 32 weeks, the risk of breast cancer goes up dramatically and even more dramatically if there's any family history of cancer. So screening would require the woman to be to tell whether she has any family history of breast cancer. If that's not done, it's negligence and under the 2018 Act, it's criminal negligence. So Section 21 requires informed consent. Section 26 says any individual or body corporate is guilty of willful negligence if they don't do all that they're required to do in relation to the health of the woman, and also that um, the, the punishment for that is 14 years imprisonment. So the couple have taken a civil case uh, the solicitor is Quiva Hawhey in High Street, uh, and you could contact the couple through her if you needed to get a statement. But um, they are also entitled to take a criminal case, and even if they don't take a criminal case, a criminal offence has occurred because the law does not allow a killing of a baby after 12 weeks. So the law says if you kill a baby after 12 weeks, it's an unlawful killing. Now, specifically, just to be very clear, what the law says, you can only kill the baby after 12 weeks if the baby is handicapped with not just any kind of handicap, but a fatal handicap, as they call it, fatal fetal abnormality. But again, even if that was the case, which is not the case, the DNA shows the baby was perfect. But even if the baby had been handicapped, the mother would have had to be told that she allowed the baby to be killed by a doctor or doctor. That would mean that her risk for life for breast breast cancer would be increased, and that the protection she would have had if she allowed the baby to be born was taken away. So, mm -hmm. informed consent is one thing that's illegal, <coughs> and the other one is that the baby was perfect, so there was no legal permission. In other words, that, as the law itself says, it's an unlawful killing. So it's a clear case under the unlawful killing of a perfectly healthy baby. And secondly, without informed consent, it means it's assault and battery. Anything that did, that did occur to the woman. Where, what, is, what is your knowledge or your evidence of the informed consent being lacking? Because I um, sent the information in relation to what was required to be told. In other words, there is since uh, 1745 to 300 years. Yeah, no, I'm not being. The uh, details, I'll tell you. Yeah, I swear, history lesson, but no, I'm just. So I'm in this particular case. Then. Okay, well, I wrote to the master of the maternity hospitals, uh, Higgins in College Street, uh, 
Malone in um, Rotunda. And I uh, informed him of the scores of research papers which I mentioned here, showing a direct correlation between uh, induced elective abortion and increased risk of breast cancer. And I asked them to respond to it or to deny it. Um, and they didn't do so. I sent it to the Minister for Health, Simon Harris. He didn't respond to it. I sent it to MTD, Rockdick, in fact. And <coughs> it is the fact that no woman is told, because the, the HSC have put in their um, information booklets on abortion, that there is no connection between abortion and breast cancer. So they have denied the research since 1745. Okay. Um, I mean, if you want to verify that, of course, you'd have to do that. You would have to interview the um, the couple involved, in this case, uh, through Quibit Party. So you, can, you don't have to take my word for it. Obviously, you have to do an impartial objective investigation. So I um, know under European law, if you want to refer to two judgments that um, require the, the European Court here in uh, judgment, three judgments. One is uh, 16th of February 2017, Schmidt, and the reference is C219-15. And that requires, um, in terms of health bodies within the uh, European Union, that uh, treatments uh, require that the, the health service or the, the Department of Health system in any country must take all steps necessary to ensure protection for the health of persons. Of second judgment is C296 16P from the 8th of June 2017, which says that uh, they found in this particular case that mentioning the dangers inherent in any treatment have to be done apart from mentioning any benefits. So, for example, if you're told the benefit of an abortion is that you won't have to have the baby, and if that's considered a benefit, they also have to say, and the risks that could involve such as suicide, preterm births, breast cancer, which they don't do, and therefore they're in conflict with this. Uh, so it's saying these allegations can therefore be considered ambiguous and misleading, misleading for the consumer. So that's the second judgment. And the third one, uh, I'll give you this now in a second. The third one is C62115 of the 21st of June 2017. And that's a case of where the family took a case to the European Court where the the father had been vaccinated for hepatitis B and he died of multiple sclerosis. So there was no family history and the judge said that um, the temporal proximity between the treatment and the occurrence of the, the damage, of, in this case death, the lack of any personal family history of disease and a part of the person treated and the existence of a significant number of reported cases of disease occurring after the treatment making through constitute serious specific and consistent evidence. That's in the case of one person getting multiple sources. But the evidence in relation to breast cancer after abortion, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of cases. You're talking about 79 out of 108 research papers showing a direct correlation. And you're also, you also have um, statistical research forecasting for the last 15 years from the abortion figures, the um, breast cancer treatments. So this forecast is uh, actuarial science and it has a correlation of 0.84. It's been done for Northern Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, uh, Denmark and uh, the Czech Republic. With a correlation, I'll just give you the figure because it won't mean anything to you, but 0.3 is scientifically uh, significant for a correlation, but the correlation achieved by this actuarial scientist is 0.84. So 0.84 is uh, nearly three times the required significance. So, uh, you know, this shouldn't have to be proven to be fact. All the, for reasonable patient standard of care, all you have to ask yourself is, would, um, would you take an operation or procedure where you could be at risk, where there's scientific research shown, forget about even proving it, a potential risk, and if you're denying that information, you um, don't have did you get a response from uh, public hospitals to say that this information isn't provided? They didn't respond at all. So you don't know if this information is provided or not? Well, they denied the link. Uh, Peter Boylan, who was the head of the obstetrician mm -hmm. gynecologist, denied it on radio in a conversation I had with, um, what's his name, Pat Duffy, Joe Duffy. Mm -hmm. 
So that was in 2016. I had written to him repeatedly, asked him, I challenged him to debate, and also the masters, and none of them have acknowledged the writing. Um, but I can prove that they got the letter. Uh, yeah. So well, we, well, they, first, they, first, 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 you know, and then uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been given. There's no case. It's, it's not been given, there's no case. So that's again, you can check that, but uh, I know that if they're denying it publicly on radio, I reported this to the Medical Council that Peter Boyle had denied uh, the fact that there was so much research for the research paper. He said that I was plucking it out of the air, the uh, 79 out of 100, and a peer reviewed published research, and not just opinions, they're mm -hmm. peer reviewed and are published in the Lancet, the Journal of Cancer, and so on. So Peter Boyle denied this on air that there was, that I, he said I was plucking it out of the air, which I I can prove that I wasn't. And what he said is demonstrably false. I had Professor Joel Brind of New York University, an eminent global uh, epidemiologist, make a, a statement which he signed here with Congo Catholic uh, solicitors when I had him here uh, during the referendum last year. Mm -hmm. So he has made a statement which uh, he contradicted uh, Peter Boyle and said it's demonstrably and categorically false. So the uh, activities, if they choose to ignore that, that's, they're guilty of, in my opinion, criminal negligence. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we have an actual crime because regardless of whether they tell women this, that baby was perfect. And the law did not allow the killing of a baby that's perfect after 12 weeks and the baby was 15 weeks. So that's my case. Um, those, that couple are not only entitled to uh, sue for civil damages, but there's a criminal case which it's not necessary for them to pursue it because it's actually a, a crime mm -hmm. under the law. Uh, but obviously they, they can make um, charges themselves if they wish, but it's not necessary for them to make yeah, the charge. I'm, I'm not going to speak on I know. a specific case because I, I'm not aware I know, of, no. of, the, yeah. of the facts. Oh, you have okay. to look into it. I just yeah. want to put it on record. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, I have all the research here, uh, 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 all the research papers, and uh, I just show you the credentials of the person she's a world renowned uh, oncologist. Um, and there's quite a lot of research here, so you, you won't read it. Uh, no. it. But her, all the research you've got, uh, you've heard of Wikipedia? Yeah. Well, this is Maripedia, M A R R I. So I think it means marriage and uh, reproductive. Yeah, so um, all the research, in particular in relation to abortion from 1957, is on the Maritia, you know, so it's publicly available. Okay. So that's basically what I wanted to put onto this statement, that uh, regardless of whether it's an informed consent, which I believe can be proven that they never had, not just in relation to the side effects, of abortion before lactogenesis at 32 mm -hmm. weeks, which is um, normally the uh, abortion for fatal fetal abnormality are before 32 weeks. Okay. But regardless of that, just the fact that an innocent baby was killed before, uh, sorry, after 12 oh, weeks sorry. and uh, was not uh, under the provision for being handicapped. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and under the European rule. Yeah. Yeah. One of the says it is. Um, Can you just take that now? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have we have quite a lot of information to, to consider there. I give you my phone number. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Put it up there. You can have this here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. It's zero eight nine. Yeah. Four 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 one four zero zero. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, I can put it later. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Do you, do you have them uh, No. No, okay. I have been counselling for, uh, since 1995, I've been counselling women in crisis pregnancy. Um, in a, here in Berkeley Street we are at the moment. And, um, yeah, is it a... So it's a women's counselling network, right. 9 Berkeley Street. So we've been counselling since 1994 to the present time. So because of that I've, I've been able to become familiar with any side effects and the research 
supporting that mm. over the last 24 years. So I would be in a position that obviously that couple wouldn't be in a position to be aware of that information, yeah. especially if they hadn't been given any counselling. Um, so there are other reasons why the treatment, uh, as they were called, was not lawful. And one of them was improper screening for psychological problems that can occur after abortion, especially for women who wanted the baby, which obviously this couple very much did, and the nightmare of uh, guilt, grief, depression, uh, post-traumatic stress reactions after the abortion of a wanted baby. It's just incredible. And regardless of even just abortion in any case, but where it's the case of a married couple and they want the baby, the amount of research showing the damage that can occur. So what I'm saying is screening for a couple in that situation did not occur, in my opinion. And I think if you investigate, you'll find that they weren't screened for psychological limitations or future risk, just on the psychological level. Mm -hmm. uh, anything well, else? I leave it with you because I just want to put it on my card yeah. and I felt if I leave it too long. I'll chase up your previous complaint that you have made. I just stopped this. Okay. You're careful about anything being accurate. So, so all of that information was put on record at the Mountjoy station. The information was relayed to the news media, RTE, news desk, the examiner, etc. Uh, that this uh, crime had been reported and to date none of them have reported this reporting of criminal offence under the 2018 Abortion Act.